So queues are everywhere. You can find them in message brokers, event driven system, thread pools, just to name a few. A naive queue implementation is not thread safe at all, which means when multiple threads adds and removes from a queue, it may lead to incorrect results and worse runtime exceptions. In this video, we start with understanding what are concurrent queues, why we need them, and then we write our own concurrent thread set queue in Golang to get a deeper understanding of it. And then we touch upon some real world applications as well. So here I'm using a cloud-based IDE called Replit to code this out. Because it is cloud-based, I do not have to set up anything locally and I just need a browser to get started. Replit has an amazing LLM assistant named Ghostwriter, which is extremely powerful because it is vertically trained on programming and software development knowledge base. And the best part is it spits out answers and suggestions in the context of the code that you are writing. Apart from this, Replit has something called as bounties, which can help you make some money on the side. As a bounty, companies post paid projects on web applications, AI tools, Discord bots, and so much more. You can pick the one that interests you, complete it, and get paid. Just sign up on Replit with my link in the description down below. Once you sign up on the home page itself, you can see a section called bounties. When you click on explore, you can see the projects that are listed there and the amount of money you can make out of that. Pick the one that interests you, apply for it and just get started. So the link for the sign up is in the description down below. Go through that, sign up from our link. And this, to be honest, is a great way to make some money on the site doing what you love. So do check that out. So now let's head back to the video. So concurrent thread safe queues allows multiple threads to read and write data concurrently from it. A queue typically has two operations, NQ and DQ. And NQ operations look something like this, where you do index plus plus, and then you put, then, then you in the array, queue of index, you set the element that you are trying to insert. Same in case of DQ operation, you are picking the element from the index and then doing index minus minus. It's a pretty standard array based implementation. But if you look closely, both of these operations, index plus plus, index minus minus, and queue of index is equal to E are not thread safe at all. So overall, a naive queue implementation is not thread safe. We would write a very simple Golang code to see this in action that why it is not thread safe what happens, what is happening behind the scenes, and then we change our implementation and make it concurrent thread safe implementation using pessimistic logging. So let's jump into the code straight away. We start with defining a struct of called concurrent concurrent Q and in which we would have an element Q, not a channel, we would just have an element Q of type in 32, right? And then what we do is we would define a function called NQ in which we are taking an element and putting it over here. Uh, we'll take name it as item of type in 32. And what we would do is we would do Q.Q .Q equal to append Q.Q .Q of item, right? Basically what our append oper our NQ operation would look like NQ operation is adding something at the end of the queue. It's same as append operation, which is what we are doing. And then we define our DQ operation and our DQ operation would look something like this in which our DQ operation, by the way, our DQ operation would be what? Picking the first element and throwing it out. And effectively it means that our queue is same as all the elements except the first element. Right? So our DQ operation would be q.q is equal to q.q of one colon. Right? which means all the element except the first element. I set it as my new queue. But before that, I would have to pick my item to be C dot Q of zero and then return that item. Right? And my DQ operation returns in 32 and it does not take any argument per se. And I do this. But here there is an edge case. What if my queue is empty? Then Q dot Q of zero will give me an error. So I need to check C Q dot Q is equal to zero. Then we raise a panic and we say cannot DQ from an empty queue. Right now to test, this looks like a pretty simple queue that we implemented. We would just define one more function called size, which just returns the length of the queue. That's it. Right. And in the main function, what we do, we define Q1 is equal to a new instance of concurrent queue, in which we would initialize our queue attribute to an in32 of size 0 
and then we do q1.nq i put one and then i put two i put three and then we do three dq operations print ln q1 dot dq we do q1 dot dq again q1 dot dq again and let's we let's say we do it the fourth time we have to import fmt package over here now if i do this i built a simple queue did three nq operations did four dq operations for the fourth dq operations the queue length will be empty so we should see an exception but before that we should see one two three getting printed because we inserted one two three dq one two three and then we should see an exception let's see if we see that we see one two and three cannot dq from an empty queue correct so we just built a very simple queue in golang okay now what do we do we would want to see that it is not thread safe which means let's spin up multiple threads to do it so for i is equal to zero i is less than let's say i spin up one million thread so one two three four five six i forgot one like this and i plus plus and i move my nq operation inside the for loop and i say q1 dot nq and i pass in my rand function and i pass in in 31 so any nq any random value in that and we remove all other statements for now right now this means that we are inserting 1 million elements inside my queue right 1 million elements in the queue now this is a synchronous code perfectly fine it would run just fine it would enqueue all of those things and my process terminates right okay now let's do it in a thread so i spin up i write an anonymous function to do the same operation in through a go routine right and ideally we should be waiting for our go routine to complete so i'll define a where wg wait group wg for encoding i'll name it as wge every time i spin up a new thread i do wge dot add one and then wge dot done over here so through this we are waiting for all the go routines to complete before we print the size of the queue as fmt dot print ln q1 dot size right so what we are doing is we are spinning off 1 million go routines all enqueuing into the queue and then waiting for threads to complete and we are printing q1 dot size so what should the q1 dot size be it should be 1 million let's run and see if we get 1 million or not when we run we do not see 1 million we see 958,000. what's happening here we see that the operation through which we are appending into the end of the queue is not thread safe. Why? Because it is happening that two threads got, like two threads are literally writing at the same index inside the uh, slice, inside the array that we have. Because of which the final size that we would ideally expect that because we are running 1 million threads, all doing nq once we are waiting for all threads to come oh wait wait sorry sorry sorry, sorry. wg dot wait now we are waiting for all threads to complete and then let's run wge dot wait all threads to complete now we run and see the size of it now let's see what happens we see 977050 it's still not 1 million we expect 1 million to be there but it's not 1 million it's 976000 something 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 right here we see that my append operation is not thread safe, right? This is the problem. My queue, the queue that we built, a naive queue is not thread safe because as soon as multiple threads try to enqueue from that queue, a lot of them wrote at the exact same location. They were not added after that. So we need to make it thread safe. How do we do it, right? The way we do it is by using mutexes. The key root cause, the root cause of this problem is that this operation is not atomic in nature. How do we make it atomic? If it is not atomic in nature, what would we do? We would wrap it in a mutex. This way what would happen is only one thread would be allowed to execute this one line at a time. That even though you have 1 million threads, but only one thread would be allowed to do this. So what we do is we define a mutex, sync dot mutex, and before we do nq, we do mu dot lock, but q dot mu dot lock, and then before my nq exits i do defer q dot mu dot unlock okay for folks who don't know golang defer function or uh, whatever you write after defer will be executed when your function exits so you don't have to write it all places like it this code is equivalent to us writing q dot mu dot lock over here 
right? But I'm just, because it's Golang, I'm just writing deferred space q dot mu dot unlock. So it would always happen at the exit of my function. It would release the lock, which is what we need, right? So it is same as writing that mu dot unlock afterwards. Now, when I run this, let's see what happens. Now with this implementation, we would see it's exactly 1 million. It's exactly 1 million. That no matter how many times I run, I would see that my Q, my NQ operation is happening exactly 1 million times and exactly 1 million elements are getting added at the end of the queue. I should also add my uh, Q, my Q.mu.unlock and defer Q.mu.unlock over here so that in case someone invokes size in the middle of the operation, not at the end, it would still show the consistent value, right? So we are acquiring a lock. So what we are doing is we're making any thread to acquire just one, like, like no matter how many threads we have, we would wait, like all n minus one thread would wait while one thread is executing the critical section. That's what we are doing, right? Similarly, if I add one more thing on, let's say 1 million NQ operations we did, let's say we do 1 million DQ operations, on this NQ and DQ and I'm DQing 1 million values and I'll have another weight group for all the DQ operations separately and WGE, WGD and WGE.weight we do WGD.weight and then I print the size and I just need to define WGD D stands for DQ, FII so WGD, WGE and now what we should see is okay i have to make this this thing uh c dot mu dot no sorry q dot mu dot lock and defer q dot mu dot unlock right now if i run and we see we should see the size to be zero no matter what because we are doing 1 million nq operations 1 million dq operations the size eventually becomes zero right this is how we make we make our queue thread safe. We wrapped, what we just did is we just wrapped our NQ and DQ operations in the mutex that we have. Now we can have as many instances of current, of basically concurrent queue, no matter how many threads are trying to write into this queue, there would be no quote unquote race condition per se, no inconsistencies, no incorrectness, nothing. This is how we have to write concurrent queue. This is huge for a normal real world application. Why? Because in real world, you do not have just one thread doing all the things. You have multiple threads interacting with this queue, which is where, again, as I always say, writing multi-threaded programs is easy, but writing correct multi-threaded program is really difficult. You have to think of at every single step, what would be happening behind the scenes so that you know that the output that you would expect, you are exactly getting that. It's correct. Right, correctness, ensuring correctness is one of the most essential things in writing multi-threaded programs. And this is how you write a concurrent queue. The core idea of that is we wrap the NQ and the DQ operation with explicit mutual, uh, explicit, explicit mutexes. This means at any given point in time, only one thread would be doing any operation on the queue, making it thread safe. So we are actually serializing the parallel execution that we have, right? Again, it would, bring down the performance of your code, but correctness is more important than performance, right? So you have to ensure that if user says I've inserted 1 million items, you should see 1 million items in the queue. We have ensured that, right? Now, before we wrap up, let me speak about few very interesting things where concurrent queues play a very important role. First of all, advantages. First of all, it's thread safe. We see why thread safety is important and how we are ensuring that. Second is scalability because now it improves, like it allows multiple things or multiple uh, threads to run simultaneously and interact with this queue and ensuring it is correct, right? It's really important. So whenever you're writing multi-threaded program and if there is a queue shared between them, ensure that you are picking up concurrent queue. You don't have to implement it every time, depending on the language that you are using, you might find some of the other implementations of it already there. But where does it lack? synchronization over it. We saw 1 million threads trying to enqueue from that, but only one is allowed to enqueue. Everyone else is just waiting for that, right? So there is a huge synchronization over it because of our pessimistic implementation. There is a huge amount of wait time because your threads is waiting to be moving on, but you're not allowing it to do that because of the mutex that you used, right? So it degrades the performance, but you get correctness out of your code. Now, few real-world applications for that, 
वन ऑफ द मोस्ट फैसिनेटिंग थिंग इज थ्रेड पुल्स इनकेस आर नॉट अवेयर दट जस्ट अ गूगल सर्च अवे इंटरनल इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ अ थ्रेड थ्रेड पुल ऑल यूज अ ब्लॉकिंग कंकरंट क्यू बिकॉज मल्टीपल कंकरंट रनिंग इन पैरल मल्टीपल थ्रेड ट्राइंग टू पुट इन टू द थ्रेड पुल गेट फ्रॉम दैट pretty interesting application of that and then it is heavy it is very heavily used in doing batch processing so for example you have multiple threads trying to do something they are synchronizing through this queue you put a lot of data into this queue so that you can do a batch write into a backend database for example let's say there are multi or let's say there are multiple threads which are trying to scrape a particular website they would all put the scraped web pages or the scraped data into this shared queue so that one of the worker or few of the workers can pick a batch of items and write it into the database now here you need parallelism you need multiple threads to be scraping the website so that it scrapes faster you take it put it into the queue and then few set of threads they are extracting from this n items at a time and writing it into the database to very real world applications of concurrent queues where if it was not concurrent then you would not get correct results why because imagine you scraped 1 million pages but as we just saw in the example without logs without making it thread safe you could see 950 950k only so you were losing 50k pages if if i may just translate this example as is right so concurrent queue plays a very important role into writing a into writing correct multi threaded programs that requires queue so now you know how to write concurrent queues how to write your own from scratch and this is exactly what i wanted to cover in this one So yeah that's it that's it for this one i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amusing i really want all of you to implement concurrent queues in your favorite programming language c c++ java python pick your favorite language but implement it make it thread safe it's fascinating the world of multi threaded programming is really fascinating really encourage you to implement one so yeah that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton